sad taxes. Take a look at what they pay. If you've got a small business here in Philadelphia, and I'm on Broad Street, by the way, this big business area, you'd think, look at what they pay. In addition to federal tax, income tax, state income tax, they've got a Philadelphia wage tax, which is the highest in the nation. Uh, they've also got something called a business income and receipts. The convenience of having it in your home means you'll really... All five two three six three, and we'll calculate your savings for you. Hi, I'm Jane King, and thank you for watching. This show is all about public private and blockchain companies. We bring you the innovators behind the companies making the headlines in that space. Some are sponsored, some are invited, all are curated and focused on telling you, the viewers, their story. Here we go. Pharmaceuticals has entered into an exclusive worldwide licensing agreement for its antiviral COVID inhibitor. So with me is the CEO of Tonix, Seth Letterman. Uh, great to have you, Seth, to explain this new agreement. Um, give me the overview and then we'll talk a little bit more in detail about it. Well, thank you, Jane, and thanks for having me on. We're very excited. The um, COVID pandemic still rumbles on. And despite the vaccine deployments and the rest of it, many people are gonna to continue to contract COVID. And right now the drugs that we have aren't enough. So we're delighted to have reached an agreement with Oyagen, a private company in Rochester, New York, run by a professor from University of Rochester named Harold Smith, who's a worldwide leading expert on coronaviruses and uh, RNA viruses in general. And they've developed um, what we are now calling TNX 3500. And they've brought it to a point where it's a perfect deal for both sides because we will be able to bring it into clinical trials and get it tested. And they've done all of the basic science up to this point. Okay, so describe like where in the coronavirus process would this come? Would this be a treatment for somebody who's infected, preventative, early in the sickness? I mean, how does it work? Thank you. Yes, this is for someone who is at the early stage of showing symptoms. And it is uh, similar mechanistically to Gilead's drug remdesivir, but it's different enough that uh, Oyagen is already that remdesivir and TNX 3500 are additive, meaning that their mechanisms don't quite overlap that if you put the two of them together in, you know, in tissue culture, uh, you can use lower doses of each of them and get higher killing of the virus. So in a lot of antiviral therapies, combination therapy is critical. Uh, for example, in HIV, I'm sure you've heard of drugs like Atripla and other ones where you need to have be hitting a virus at more than one point, first of all, to get more activity, but also potentially to decrease the ability of the virus to mutate away from, from the antiviral therapy you're giving. Okay, and then, so when might patients be able to use this? Or I, I know I ask you this and it's always a little tricky, but do you have any kind of timeline at all? Well, I mean, our, our near-term goal is to get it into trials. Mm -hmm. So we are rapidly going to put it into our system and um, you know, make the drug product and get the 
uh, application together to FDA called an IND so that we can begin human testing. Depending on where uh, in the cycle, um, you know, our initial human results will come, I think will we'll depend on how quickly it can get out. For example, if COVID is as bad as it is today, then, um, you know, clearly we would consider uh, the pathway of an emergency use authorization. If the vaccines and herd immunity bring COVID down a notch, then maybe it would go through more of a regular pathway. Okay. And then um, this is just one thing you've been working on. I mean, you have a lot of other things in the pipeline too, with immunology, uh, central nervous system therapies, kind of explain where all of that is at this point. Yeah, we have a lot going on. One of the very distinctive things about tonics is that we are agnostic in terms of the type of technology underlying a therapeutic. So our, our products go all the way from a live virus vaccine for COVID to um, a protein made in CHO cells, to a protein made in E. coli, to small peptide therapeutics, to small molecules. So we cover the gamut of things, but what a year we're having. We expect to have four drugs in clinical trials by the end of the year in phase, uh, well, uh, three in phase two studies, one in phase one, but that's in addition, I'm not even counting our treatment for fibromyalgia, which is our lead program, that is mid phase three. And we expect to report the interim analysis of the fibromyalgia study for TNX-102SL in Q3. And we expect to report the top line data in the fourth quarter. Now, if that data are positive, and we think that's a good chance because this study is really a you know, a, a duplicate, a confirmatory study of the positive phase three that we reported in last year, at the end of last year, then we would be in a position to file the new drug application. So we, we have a number of programs that are in late clinical stage development, but they are led by 102SL for fibromyalgia. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Seth, for joining us with the update. Best of luck and congratulations on your success. Thank you very much, Jane. Thanks for having me on. PetProducts.com, thousands of products, and Al Simon, we we pad in Venture Company. Bradley Moore is the CEO of Global Cannabis Applications Corporation, and we look forward, Bradley, to getting an update on the company. So, and I understand you have two big press releases. So, uh, the first, GCAC closes the largest revenue deal for its eFixie C to C platform, and then also a Uniswap marketing token. So, can you expand on both of those? Sure. Well, good morning. Nice to see you again, as always. Um, yeah, so it's been busy. So let's start with the, the marketing token. So essentially what we did is we've already engaged our partner, Abbey Technologies, in a marketing contract to promote GCACs in fixing its QR codes for cannabis to the Uniswap market uh, because we not only, not only does the Uniswap demogra demographic love crypto, but they also love medical cannabis. Like statistically, we've seen that. And so it, this is kind of like one of the most efficient ways for us to get out there and be able to do it and carry the message. I can actually tell you as of the day, there's, you know, through the efforts, we've actually got, we've reached 300, there's 300 shareholders of the uh, GCAC uh, uh, token. So that's 300 more eyeballs that know about what we do as a company. So that's a good start for us. Okay. When you say marketing contract, do you mean they will be marketing your token? No. So what GCAD did is we have not created a token. What we did is we entered into a marketing contract with Abby. Um, and they decided to create a unit token to raise awareness GC through our corporate brand name um, and, and, uh, and, and what Fixie is. So this is part of our consumer poll tech. Uh, strategy to let cultivators know that we're speaking to their consumers that are using medical cannabis and teaching them what's safe, efficient, effective, 
based medical cannabis should look like. Mm -hmm. Now, the press release states that you're adding the asset to your balance balance sheet. Can you explain that? Well, yeah, sure. Um, all we got to do is take a look at what Elon did with adding Bitcoin to his. And, okay. you know, we're all publicly traded. So I think it's a, it's a well, we're not quite Tesla yet. We're, we, think it, we think it's a fair way to do it. So as Elon Musk did by adding Bitcoin exposure to Tesla's balance sheet, we are adding Ethereum exposure to ours through the quarterly purchase of Ethereum denominated GCA tokens with 1% of our revenues. This is our marketing commitment to Abby. And since the Effexi platform is built on Ethereum and aligned with Ethereum 2.0 once it launches, actually we're the first Canvas related company to launch on that Ethereum 2.0 focused technology. So it only makes sense that we purchase our own GCA tokens on the Ethereum Uniswap platform using some of our marketing budget. Mm -hmm. And also the press release states you're committing 1% of your top line earnings to marketing. So if I do the math right, this means in theory, based on your first press release, we mentioned you could add 160,000 from your uh, Herb Industries deal next year. Am I correct? Yeah, so that's actually why we wanted to kind of wait instead of just talking about Herb and, and we wanted to actually show what the power of a of an actual deal would do, right? So for for example, in 2021, we're looking at, like we said, 34 million grams, making roughly 38 cents a gram. You know, we're going to get ourselves into a position we get $130,000 to that liquidity pool. And that's fantastic in terms of creating that awareness and Explosion. Now, when you look at 2022, which Herb's revenue falls in part of, um, you know, that works out to be approximately another $370,000 that we're going to put into that liquidity pool. So this is all really kind of exciting. So the model itself, the revenue drives its own marketing, which drives its own awareness and it keeps, which drives end up driving more revenue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so every deal closed is its own marketing awareness promotion. So you just talked about to this key demographic and the value of the Uniswap token grows as GCAC builds sales revenue. Now, it seems that if the Ethereum value asset is recorded on the public balance sheet and the public share count doesn't increase, then the share price could track the increase in the assets? Yeah, so you know, as a Podco CEO, I'm never here to talk about share price. That's 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 not what I do. You know, I, look, our overall marketing campaign is to reach that consumer. Our overall marketing objective is to focus on carrying the fixing messages to medical cannabis consumers that may click on one of our Google AdWord campaigns or those that may be part of the Uniswap community. Cultivators, as our paying customers, need to see that by working with a fixie, they are not only on the right side of the cannabis regulators, but they can also lower their compliance costs and increase sales, all the while driving better outcomes for medical cannabis patients. Now, we know crypto is volatile in general, and you said that the GCAC token is paired to Ethereum. So how does that crypto vol volatility impact the token? So crypto, i.e. blockchain, in many cases demonstrate that you don't always need a middleman and associated regulations in the financial services vertical. The Uniswap platform is a superb example of how the Ethereum blockchain can be leveraged for use in cryptocurrency and token trading. In the cannabis industry, where there's a lack of uh, high quality consumer focused efficacy, efficacy and growing data. It fixes use of Ethereum and actually helps to create a meaningful relationship between regulators, consumers and cultivators by fostering a transparency and trust based relationship by all the stakeholders. The GCHC token has one job to tell that story to the Uniswap demographic quarter by quarter. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Brad. And um, thanks for the update. And I look forward to more updates as the year goes on. Thanks, Jane. Thanks. PetProducts.com. Thousands of products. An Al Simon Wee Wee Pad Inventor Company.
Elixir CEO Ian Parker is back with us to talk about progress that the company has made. So Ian, great to have you back. And um, I guess just tell us, I mean, things seem to be picking up pace with some of your business initiatives lately. Yes, thank you for having us back. Um, absolutely, the, the most exciting updates we have right now is that this incredible care ecosystem that we built is now going from pilot to roll out. So we currently are finalizing testing in, in Dallas right now with a globally recognized tech enabled last mile application. And once we finalize this next round of testing, perhaps in the next uh, week or two, we'll be ready to uh, start the rollout of the digital pharmacy application to select metropolitan areas um, and expand the entire into the entire nation over time. Um, keep in mind, you know, I think one of the one of the important points here is that this is one of the cornerstones of the entire care ecosystem. And once you combine that with the virtual care platform that allows doctors to connect to the patients virtually, and you now take the remote patient monitoring piece, which allows us to take the vital signs directly from the camera on your phone, you now have an entire chain of care in one complete technology stack. Wow, and and I've, I've talked to you for a year or so, and I mean, I know what it's taken to get to this point, so this is, I'm excited for you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's great. So, okay, so once the rollout begins, then what next? Like how, what are the next steps for the company? Yeah, so uh, we, I think one of the things I would point to here is, uh, as you, as you probably remember last year, we signed an understanding with a healthcare benefits company that has access to about 3.5 million lives. Uh, as we move from pilot to rollout, we now start the process of beginning to convert those lives from a fragmented care environment to a seamless, complete chain of care platform. Just to sort of put that in perspective as to what that means to a health tech company like ourselves, if you look at Live on Go, for example, um, pre the pre teledoc merger, the value of that, uh, uh, their value on the public markets was about ten billion dollars. Um, they had approximately three hundred and twenty thousand lives in their platform. So uh, that should help give people some perspective as to what those lives mean in the system. Um, as we set up, you know, to to convert those lives, what's going to happen is you're going to see us quickly surpass a lot of our smaller competitors, and we're gonna we're gonna put ourselves on a trajectory to to start to catch some of our larger competitors, and that is you know part of how we've sort of gone methodically through building shareholder value here. Now, I also saw there's a press release about a newly formed medical advisory committee that is also helping to grow the business. So tell me about that. Yes. So uh, we've been referring to this as our, our Justice League of, of healthcare professionals. Um, I, I am a, a comic fan, as you can see. Uh, uh, understand that these professionals um, have been around the company for some time. So we're formalizing this right now. They've been sort of operating in stealth mode uh, up until this point. Uh, these are globally recognized healthcare experts. Um, in order to build a platform this sophisticated and this robust, we needed to um, we needed to listen to the best in the healthcare community um, and make sure that we married them up to to you know the top engineers. So if you look at the way the platform has been built, it's been built by top engineers, and at the same time, you know it's been designed and informed by healthcare superstars. We're going to start introducing these healthcare professionals to the market um, one by one because, quite frankly, each one of them deserves their own spotlight. They are an incredible group of people, and, and we really look forward to introducing them. I think that's also going to help the market understand how we're, you know, how this was created, and how we're going to execute on on this incredibly robust platform. So as you mentioned the engineers, let's talk about the tech platform. So I kind of explained from the user point of view, how will all of that work? Uh, so you have virtual care, which is the, the way the doctors connect to the patients virtually. What we've done is we've combined that with remote patient monitoring. So now it's a touchless system where the user can get on the phone, they can look at the camera, and now those vital signs are being instantly transmitted back to the healthcare professional. 
to the clinician on the other side. That clinician can now prescribe therapies to them. And because of the fact that we have the remote patient monitoring piece, because of that, we can now expand the, the amount of therapies that we can prescribe virtually. So that allows us to rapidly, um, rapidly get those therapies to, uh, from the digital pharmacy to the patient. So if you look at the way that would operate, pa patient sees the doctor, doctor then takes the vital signs, diagnoses the issue, and then prescribes the medication. We bring it directly to your door. You now have your therapies when you need them, where you need them. Okay, anything you'd like to add? Um, I think the only thing I would like to add is that um, as we introduce these these uh, these professionals um, that we're bringing on to the committee, um, I just want to say thank you to them for all the help that they provide, all the insight they provided, all the guidance they provided over time to help us build this really robust platform. Yeah. Well, and I was going to say, Ian, let's have some of them on for an interview. Once Absolutely. you're ready to make that public, I think that'd be great to hear from them. Absolutely. I, I think uh, having a panel on would be would be fantastic and they would be certainly open to it. Good idea. Let's do it. So, all right. Thank you so much, Ian, for the update. Thank you. Appreciate it. PetProducts.com, thousands of products, an Al Simon Wee Wee Pad Inventor Company. The next flow is the world's first fully regulated crypto brokerage. And with me is the CEO, James Gillingham, to explain exactly what this means all the way from Singapore. So great to be talking to you on the other side of the world. And James, I mean, if you could just explain your background and what is Finex Flow all about? So I had a very unconventional start to life. Um, I left school at the age of 16 years old to pursue a career as a professional soccer player or football player for my, for my English fans. Um, after getting injured, I, I, I then pursued uh, a career in financial services. So I moved into the traditional world of finance. I was a trader. Um, I was trading Forex. I then went to, uh, to help manage a $4 billion fund of hedge funds. Whilst I, I was there, I started to develop my own fully automated trading algos. After real good success there, um, I then created my own company, my own business. Um, and that was when I actually employed my, one of my first staff um, at that particular company. And he introduced me into to Bitcoin back in 2013. Um, so that was a very, very interesting foray um, for the first kind of uh, time me to, for me to move into the digital asset space. Um, then after Jagero, um, the for the automated algorithmic company. Um, I, I essentially sold it. Then, then I moved on. Then I was creating a bunch of different brokerages. Um, I fell out of love with crypto because of what happened in 2013 and uh, the exchange that I was trading on at that time. Um, it was hacked and, and I ended up losing losing those funds. And I thought, oh, this is this is this is a scam. So um, I, I actually didn't trade at all in, in crypto until 2017. Um, and, and then I started to trade in, in, in crypto. I was still running some some FX brokerages and things like that. And then I came up with the idea for Finex Flow around two years ago. And then we started uh, operating the brokerage that's running today. Okay. Well, what an interesting kind of path that took you here. In 2013, that was really early in the in the Bitcoin world. I, I think I was about 2017 when I started to get interested. So it feels like it's been a while. So then how did the idea of Finex Flow come to you? So, to be honest, after the uh, the issues of 2013, 2014, I was very skeptical, right? So I was one of these skeptical people, and especially being in the, the more traditional world of finance, I was like, oh, it's a scam, it's a fake, it's for it's to pay for nefarious activity, right? It's, it's, it's not something that I want to be involved with. It took me a number of years to kind of get over that that kind of experience. Um, and then in 2017, as, as, as I say, I started to trade, and being being a, a traditional FX trader, um, I, I, like, I like to be able to get global 
liquidity. So I essentially opened up a bunch of exchange accounts, um, but it was very, very difficult to be able to do that because I had to open up all these accounts with KYC, AML, and then, and then you log in and then you're looking at four or five screens and you're looking around to try and see whatever the best possible price is because I'm, 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 I'm an intraday trader. Um, so after that kind of headache and pain, I was like, there must be an aggregator, there must be a brokerage where I can log into one account and have multiple pools of liquidity or exchanges that are plugged into one venue, essentially. Um, I, I kind of searched, I looked, I couldn't find any. Um, so then I kind of contacted my my buddy and an ex-working colleague, Thomas Plaskasinski. Um, and, and I said to him, uh, hey, can you can you, can you build this? Like can from, from a technical standpoint. So uh, yeah, we we, we we then went about building and developing uh, the actual trading platform uh, that the, the, has now been built and developed today to, to be able to help traders gain access to much better pricing, much better security. Um, and just ensure that we are adding a lot of benefit to lots of people's lives who are trading crypto. Yeah. Well, and one thing you mentioned was about um, the, the hack and how you felt like, you know, there was, and, and we still hear that even from economic officials that Bitcoin is used for terrorist activities and drug things. And, you know, so, I mean, how did you become comfortable that uh, crypto was legit and how do you make sure Finex flow is uh, operating as it should? Sure. So Finex Flow, what we've really concentrated on is, is is kind of a new age technology, right? So there's lots of various different partners that we now have, which is like KYT, which is know your transaction. So we ensure that we are able to uh, to, to to track the, the blockchain. Many people or many governments to begin with didn't really understand distributed ledgers or blockchain technology. So they, of course, they would turn around and say, hey, it's, it's, it's used for a lot of nefarious activity, right? However, when you actually delve in, when, it, when everything is on the blockchain itself it's fully trackable it's fully traceable so kyt providers are out there we're able to see even, even if there are wallets uh, that transfer into our platform we're able to see up to five six seven steps away so we're able to see exactly how many transactions and how many what's wallets have been involved and, and if somebody's trying to wash their cash we, we will essentially freeze their assets as, as per the regulators and the regulations and government jurisdictions we will we will freeze them and then we will have to uh, report to an SAR, which is a standardized report to the regulator until they tell us or, or the government, and then they actually tell us, okay, you can either unfreeze or you allow them to continue with, or with their activities. So actually, if you delve into Finex flow and the overall structure, the way that the crypto world is actually changing, um, it's a lot safer than the more traditional fiat world. Interesting. So you've solved the problem of security and best price and, and regulation. I mean, are, are there any other problems that you're solving for crypto traders? Yeah, so mainly for larger traders, for instance, if you're executing a large trade, okay, um, what normally happens when you're trading through one venue, like a, like, like a tier one exchange, what, what happens is, is the top of book, let's, let's say that right now, which Bitcoin is at all time highs at $64,000, right? So let's assume that to, to buy it from, from USDT into, into, into Bitcoin at 64000 Whereas what we do, we aggregate multiple pools of liquidity Wow. Okay. Busy. It sounds like you've got a busy few months ahead of you. So um, thank you, James. Fascinating to hear about the next flow. And um, I look forward to an update later on this year. Sounds great. Pleasure speaking to you. Take care. On my show, I put no barriers between myself and my viewer. I don't use jargon. I never talk QE3. I don't use scripts. I just speak into the camera, tell the story, and we're invested together. Fox Business, invested in you. Most of the windows in the house uh, had leaks.